Um, all righty, all set, sir. Show is yours. All righty. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for joining us today for our live webcast. Um, it's all a click database perspective, uh, part three of our TikTok series for CA development environment for Z systems, a uh, simple to use enterprise grade modern IDE that supports new and seasoned mainframe developers to uh, manage mainframe apps with agile and modern methods, tool sets, and coding languages. Tremendously excited to be presenting this to you today. I'm joined by a trio of subject matter experts, Deha, Dave, and Vince. Uh, to present to you the database perspective uh, for our part three of this series. Uh, just a quick note before we get started in terms of logistics. Uh, at any point, uh, feel free to submit a question through the Q&A box uh, there on the top right-hand corner. Uh, that will be visible to all of the uh, panelists on today's session. I'll be sure to address that uh, throughout the presentation. Um, Otherwise, uh, we will try to leave some time at the end of the session for questions um, in case we don't get to those throughout the uh, presentation. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and get things started. So folks, just as a quick, um, you know, level set on uh, what we're talking about here with our, with our IDE solution, uh, folks, you know, as in thinking about the bigger picture and, and enabling business agility, you know, for your IT organization, it's really uh, quite, a, quite a significant process to, to build, test, and deploy applications um, in this modern application economy. And uh, the IDE that we are discussing today is, is one integral part of a larger solution set that CA continues to innovate on to help, uh, cu help our customers really drive innovation in their markets. So you'll see in this diagram here, uh, on the bottom left, where that fits in the grander scheme of things in terms of delivering agile development. But of course, you know, um, depending on, on where you sit, uh, there's a lot more to be gained as well. You're hearing a little bit about what we do, what we offer in terms of continuous testing and continuous deployment solutions. So just to, just keep that in mind. Today's focus though really is uh, on CA development environment for Z systems. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand things off to Dehan uh, to help you guys get started. Why don't you take it away? Thank you, Manning. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to all. Uh, I will just start with that. What is with a quick reminder? What is uh, development environment for Z? So DZ is basically based on the IBM IDZ, it means that uh, we are sharing and using the same host on the mainframe side as IBM IDZ. But on the client side, we are trying to provide different user experience, especially for uh, CA products as Endeavor, Intertest, SimDump, FileMaster, and uh, mainframe application tuner. Uh, these products can be directly installed with the development environment for the systems and used in, uh, in your environment. As DZ is running on the top of the Eclipse, in addition, you are also able to install and connect uh, with, uh, with the development environment the other uh, CA, CA products as, for example, ALC or uh, RA for z uh, As Marvin already mentioned, the development environment for z uh, the main purpose of it is to be a tool, modern tooling for seasoned and mainframe experienced persons and also for the next generation of the main premise. A uh, quick summary of what we already saw in the previous webinars is that we showed how easy it is to connect uh, with the desk to ZOS and uh, how to work with the mainframe resources and also showed some features of uh, development environment editor. Uh, the open environment uh, is supporting uh, COBOL, PLI, Assembler, JCL, C++, and, and also other modern uh, languages. If you miss any of these uh, webinars uh, and you are interested uh, in more of what we show, feel free to look on, on our communities where uh, the recordings of the webinars are. Uh, today, we are going to show you 
how development environment is able to work with the CA Datacom and also with the CA IDMS. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce you uh, Vince Abadi, who is our uh, Datacom expert and who will show you how you can use this uh, to work with the Datacom. Vince? Uh, thank you, Deja. I uh, appreciate it. Um, I'm over here. I'm trying to go ahead and uh, push the, the ball over, uh, and it's not cooperating with me. So in order for, for us to go ahead and provide the demo. Well, um, morning to everyone here. Um, <clears throat> we got full room uh, here in Plano um, in a conference room. Uh, and basically, um, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do at, uh, is uh, introduce uh, the way we actually, uh, you know, perform uh, in our development environment, you know, meaning from the user community and where it, uh, we might be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, we're supporting the COBOL assembly PLI. Also, the ideal, once you bring it down from the file, you know, and that's a fourth DL, we have all those <laughs> capabilities uh, uh, at that point. Uh, we also are able to go ahead and debug, uh, you know, debug all CA uh, data comp programs uh, being uh, either in batch or in CICS. Uh, and also uh, do, um, you know, all of the exploration through uh, as far as all of the options that are available in CA for, for development for Z. So uh, either via native or SQL. Um, the way that, um, basically, that this is uh, about the only slide that I have as far as the .com environment is concerned, but what I really want to go ahead and do is show you basically a quick demo, online demo, how to go ahead and set up the environment, being a, you know, a sysprog and a programmer, um, uh, I guess the, the, the main point is to how do I get there and how fast, okay? And I'll show you within the next five minutes how to go ahead and just create the environment and you being able to, commit, uh, to connect, uh, compile, and execute your progress and actually, actually, uh, and also to go ahead and verify all of your output. So um, am I there first? Uh, so I'll go ahead and start sharing my, uh, my screen at this point. Boy, there's my, this guy just jumped out of it, right? So um, here I go. I'll go ahead and start my development for Z environment, which was very easy to install from, um, you know, coming down from um, uh, support.ca.com, just bring it down from there. Uh, and then basically what I do is uh, this is just a brand new environment that I created, and I'm going to start it right here. So with a you know a couple of clicks, basically it's just uploading and just creating the environment as, uh, as you would usually. And here we are. I went ahead and verify everything. So. Uh, you can start with a welcome, you know, and begin reading all you can, and you and you can entertain yourself there for a long time. <laughs> but uh, that's not basically what I want to do in cheat sheets. I was going to get rid of that as well. So then the welcome, I'll get rid of that. And guess what? Immediately I have my pain all together here. Okay? I'm pretty much set up to go actually go ahead and do some work here at this point. Okay, so the first thing I need to go ahead and do is actually connect to an environment. And guess what? Right here on my remote systems, I have my ZOS, basically uh, icon where I'm able to go ahead and connect. Just double click on it, he'll come up. And then basically in our world, we know that, uh, you know, all of our systems, you know, CA11, CA31, uh, TSO1, and those are the development environments. So, uh, US IO CA31, you know, basically, and I just uh, for grins, go ahead and put in CA31 as far as the description. And then basically, as far as, you know, from that, I'm pretty much done, okay, as far as connections is concerned. And from here on out, I can go ahead and just define my panes how I want to go ahead and look at it. I just bring this down. Okay, I don't want ZS projects right here. Now, for now, David will get into uh, the, you know, uh, the projects and uh, we'll describe that in detail. I actually want to go ahead and bring my outline and put it up here, okay? 
And basically, that's just basically for um, uh, with my resource right there. So, and and that's basically you know just uh, a, a personal look into the environment. You know, this is the way I like my setup, and that's what I'm doing. Now I go into MVS file. Basically, what in my data set. What he's going to go ahead and do right here is just going to go ahead and plug in any of the data sets in the environment that start with your high-level file for it, meaning your KMS key, okay? Yes, file. My data set. Thank you, Lizzie. <laughs> Yeah, Richard's coaching me here, you know, he's just giving me a, a little heads up that it's actually going to take a minute here in order to go ahead and populate all of, uh, all of my data sets coming in from, uh, from my MBS environment that I have specifically CA31, which is probably the most used one here. Okay, and here we are. Okay, so this is the environment I can go ahead and actually from here, um, not necessarily everything just coming in with my high level qualifier or PMS key, I can actually go ahead and drag in other type of, uh, you know, data sets, you know, filter members, and from here I'm able to go ahead and allocate, uh, part, you know, partition data sets, sequential data sets, and even VSTAN data sets. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first is actually go ahead and, and go into a, a, a one of my data sets here, my PDSs, and um, one of the cool things that he will do is uh, once he actually determines, you know, it's a COBOL program, he would actually go ahead and attach the .cbl to it. You know, you go ahead and double click on that member, and then he go ahead and, and immediately goes, goes ahead and brings it up as far as the screen is concerned. Notice that the pane, the working pane, is, is up on top, and you can have as many. I believe uh, I've gone up to 20, but you know you'll get confused if you put too many up here anyway. The thing about this basically it just makes it simple. You know you can have, you you can go ahead and expand. On, and this is uh, on, on your COBOL program, that, that'll be the same thing for uh, your, um, your assembler and PO1 program, you know, where he, he will actually have marks there for you as far as your procedures additions and your paragraph names and so on and so forth. And he will do the same thing for assembler and PO1, like I mentioned. And which, uh, you know, basically all you do is just click on it and then he'll get you immediately right to the point, you know, so, um, uh, which is something that works well specifically uh, since some of the plugins that we have right up on here, you know, one of them is the inner test, you know, basically a debugging tool that, uh, that you're able to go ahead and plug it into your COBOL program, COBOL assembler and whatever else or PO1 that you have. The other thing is uh, you also have your options there for, you know, to bring in any other uh, a member. In this situation, basically over here, I have my program now here. I have my, um, my, my execution JCL. Okay, notice that he puts a dot JCL behind it just to make it a little bit clearer there. And then you, you can just go ahead and either double click on it, so you can just go ahead and bring up your JCL and verify that you're there. Notice that up on top, he's not getting rid of your COBOL program. Your COBOL program still resides there, so all you've just got to do is just click on it. Also notice that as far as the outline, the outline, you know, it, it changes accordingly, okay, and it tells you about the COBOL, you know, the, the programs or the libraries that he's using, uh, you know, the CCA, the, the the soil work area and so on and so forth. Um, so, and all this, you know, it's, uh, the, the other good thing is that uh, uh, by right mouse click, and you don't even have to go ahead and bring it in. You can make whatever function you want to go ahead and add or what, uh, or what you want to do right from there without bringing 
that member in to the actual workspace here, okay? So for instance, if I wanted to go ahead and submit it, I'll just go ahead and submit it from there, that being a JCL, okay? Notice that from the COBO program, you see, he won't have the submit function there simply because you can't submit, you know, just straight source. You, you guys knew that, right? Well, anyway, one of the things, just being a data com environment, uh, one of the things that uh, we, is, you know, we have to do up ahead is make sure that uh, we have uh, our multi-user, which is equivalent to you, uh, the IDMS people who are actually uh, on the call, is, is very similar to what the CV is, the essential version. A multi-user environment, that's a, exactly, it performs the same function as it does. So as far as my job is concerned, I just have a couple of DSO jobs, meaning I don't have anything out there. Okay, so basically what I gotta do is I gotta go ahead and find the JCL and execute, and bring up my, uh, my uh, multi-user environment. Um, am I over my five minutes just yet there, Marvin? <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, uh, right now, or um, yeah, yeah, you can ask uh, Can I ask you a question? Go right ahead. Uh, you should, uh, on your data sets, uh, retrieve data sets and my data sets, mm -hmm. what are retrieve data sets? The ones that you have received so far. That is the one you have to use this stuff. Exactly. And also. And then it basically because it maintains a history. Whether you have suffix with the CDL and JCL and things That is correct. Is this something that you assign or expenses? No, it's really it, it basically it, it senses specifically more along the lines that you know if you actually go uh, uh, on the suffix of the PDS, that COBO and that JCL, he picks up uh, you know. So if you don't put anything, would it still know that this is a JCL? And, no. No. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. You are. Um, so, so basically, from here, what I'm uh, what I'm going to need to do is actually go after. Um, after the PDS that, uh, that, I, that I'm looking for here, uh, which is DCMQA that uh, systems uh, JCL. So basically, so what happened here is since initially I just brought down the data sets with uh, my prefix, meaning my uh, a uh, high-level qualifier, uh, my PMS key, this one was not defined, okay? So therefore, now I've gone ahead and defined it. Now at this point, I'll just go ahead and, you know, double click on it. And one of, one of the nice things about it is that uh, you also have a locate, so I don't have to search through the entire PDS in order to get there. So I know what I'm looking for. I think I know what I'm looking for, uh, QA14 must. Uh, So it immediately comes up right here. So I know I'm not going to have to go ahead and bring it up, so I'll just go ahead and submit that guy, okay? As soon as it, yeah, I just tell him to go ahead and notify me. I'll go ahead and submit that guy and just make sure, just press on uh, right here and, and basically, basically it's telling me uh, that he's actually running right now, okay? And I can go ahead and, um, click on it, or I can also do on a just, the just two, I can actually go ahead and refresh to make sure that everything is up and running correctly. Okay, so here it goes through my retreat jobs. I can go ahead and expand it. I can take a look at it. Uh, basically, as far as uh, making sure all my messages are correct, and here, and just to verify whether or not it came up clean, multi-user activated, multi-user enabled, okay? You can get all of that information just by double clicking and doing, you know, uh, uh, everything from this one single pane. Okay, now that I got my COBO program, I got my JCL, I'm just gonna go ahead and submit this job, which was, uh, I probably pressed the wrong thing there, sorry. 
live demo. <laughs> Okay, and then they just click on submit, which system, the only one that I had submitted was, uh, had actually logged into was US, uh, CA31. Uh, actually, uh, one of the things that I'm actually doing here, I'm using XDS because my ma is actually running on CA11. Okay, so uh, that's another feature that I'm, I'm able to go ahead and, uh, and define right here. Now, basically, as, as you see right here, my job already showed up in my, my mini console here telling me that this job here already completed with a zero return code. Okay, so I'll go ahead and double click on it, and he'll go ahead and show up again over here. I'm able to go ahead and expand it, and I can take a look at whatever I need you know, as far as, uh, you know, whatever information I want from that COBOL program. And basically, and this is the report show, telling you or showing you that it actually went ahead and executed correctly. So <clears throat> what I did right here within a short period of time, which I think it was about seven or eight minutes there, Marvin, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I was able to go ahead and set up the environment from scratch, attached to the, um, uh, to the machine that I wanted to, I was able to go ahead and bring down all my, uh, my TDSs and then bring in the COBOL program and do whatever I needed to do and um, showed you basically uh, all of the options that are available right here. Um, David will get into a whole lot more detail as far as all of the functions and function uh, the functionalities and features of CADZ. So uh, development for Z, so um, uh, that's all as far as my demo is concerned. So uh, you can go ahead and take it away now, Marvin. Thanks, Vince. Thanks. I think, uh, let's see, you need to give me back the ball. Okay. With you uh, in the top right, if you just right-click on my, my name, you should be able to make me a presenter. Yeah, let Maybe, me, um, let me go. Beautiful. Back. All righty, so that covers our, our session today on data comp. I'm just going to keep pushing us forward and move this along to now our session on IDMS. Uh, Dave, it's all yours. Thanks, Marvin. Um, okay, let me just uh, get to our use cases. Um, so what we'll talk about for IDMS is uh, some of the use cases, what you would use developer for Z. Uh, for and um, how it can benefit you, why it would be an advantage over some of the other ways that you might do things. Um, this, this, there are numerous things that you can do with uh, developer for Z, um, and we'll talk about three use cases, um, editing and building IDMS programs, uh, debugging IDMS programs. We won't, I don't have a demo for that one, but uh, we could do that in another session, and uh, something called exploring IDMS databases um, for when we whether they're defined with SQL or defined with uh, network um, DDL. Uh, we can edit for COBOL and PL1 programs as well as assembler. Uh, developer for Z has a very rich editor uh, which can be integrated with the IDMS preprocessor. Uh, for ads, uh, currently ads, you can work with ads code uh, using the standard developer for Z editor uh, by downloading the, um, the modules from the dictionary, editing them in in developer for Z and then adding them back. So uh, let's see. Uh, without further ado, and now I'll go into my demo. Make sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, Marvin, you will need to make me the presenter. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I can't grab it. Um, okay. All right, you should be good to go. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me uh, just pull up. Okay. Okay. So this is what you saw before um, with Vince. Uh, this is the developer for Z uh, workspace. Uh, in this case, what I'm looking at here, and you see here is the remote systems explorer. These are the data sets that you can see on the mainframe as Vince showed you. Um, but what I'd like to show you is really more the ZOS projects, and this is really something you would use to uh, develop IDMS 
applications or for that matter any application. So we'll take a look at our, um, I have an IDMS demo project that I've created here. And in that I have two what they call, um, that's a ZOS project and ZOS projects can have different types of sub projects under them. And I have a, what's called a sub project called CA IDMS COBOL that, that connects to one of our internal development systems. Within that sub project I've added a library um, that contains COBOL programs and that actually library does exist over here. Um, and you can see these are all my data sets and I do have an, a Rust 01, R14, O COBOL somewhere buried in this set of things. Here it is. And I imported that into this project. Now within that, within that uh, library I have a couple of COBOL programs. One um, um, is a network DMO program and the other is an IDMS SQL program. So we'll take a look at the network DMO program because that is probably the more common use case um, for some of your existing applications, but it works with both. So I can edit this program in the rich text editor simply by double clicking on it here. And what it does is it should be, okay, it, okay, what it's doing now is actually invoking the IDMS DMLC um, preprocessor. Uh, it runs it, it runs it remotely and then it will then um, downloads the preprocessor output and it takes a second, analyzes the results um, and lo and behold it, it shows us um, this is an IDMS program. This is the source code as you can see. If, um, it has IDMS DML verbs. If we take a look at uh, using the outlining feature that that Vince showed you. We can look at a section of the code and we can see in here that um, this is this section and we can see that there are DML verbs, obtain first employee within uh, AMP demo. Now, uh, developer for Z in and of itself, of course, doesn't know anything about IDMS DML verbs, um, but the, the editor is very, very smart and it can take and compare the output from the IDMS preprocessor to the original source and then when you hover over a DML verb which has been turned into, as you know in preprocessor output, it would be turned into a comment as you can see here with a um, asterisk. So that obtained first employee within a demo region will turn into DML commands of um, to uh, call IDMS using the various the sub schema control and all the other various parameters. So you can hover over that and see those. But the important thing about this is that you are still editing the original source. And that's really important uh, because you can now uh, edit the source as you would store it in uh, a partition data set or Endeavor or <clears throat> wherever you have it. Um, but the, the built-in COBOL compiler that's within developer for Z can then actually take the output of that and compile it. So if we take a look at something else and uh, let's just go to um, this initialization session, we'll see that, oh, I've got a, uh, there's an error in my program. Uh, and this is uh, found by the COBOL compiler that's part of developer for Z. Um, it actually runs, there's a built-in COBOL compiler that runs locally uh, within developer for Z that is used uh, to enable this rich text editing. And it finds that, oh, it's unable to resolve this reference to this program. Well, that's a deliberate error because I put an X there. And if I hover over that, it tells me, oh, it gives me an idea of how you can fix it. So we can just change to program name. And if I just change it here and click on that, it collects, corrects it and re-invokes dynamically the COBOL compiler um, to, um, to get a clean compile and now I don't have any messages. I could then save it here. I won't because I'll break my demo for the next time. Um, but at this point, if I were to save it here, it would save it back into the partition data set. So I'm able to edit my source code, um, but get instant compiles um, from the COBOL compiler, which is uh, the similar experience to what a Java programmer or a C++ programmer would be useful within the developer for Z environment. And that's quite an advantage over using an ISPF editor, I think most people would think. Um, so that's, in order to then, the, that is, is to do the text editing. In order to actually compile the programs, you could right click on the program here and you can generate JCL to compile it or compile and link it, compile, link and run, the bug, et cetera, whatever the things you'd like to do. 
Now, in order, this, this developer procedure does not come out of the box set up for IDMS, but it is very straightforward to configure it. Uh, there's every, um, part of the advantage of having a project is that you can have what's called a property group. And this property group uh, is, asso is associated with, it's just a list of properties associated with a, a file or a data set. And so if we edit this associate property group, we'll see this, see IDMS. And then there's a number of categories that cut them down to make it simple. Um, but the important one here for the integrating of the text editor is I pick the configure the text editor and then I, the editor configuration. And what I'll do is just uh, identify a C list that invokes the preprocessor. Uh, in this case, what I did is I took the, um, the built-in sample um, uh, Rex exec that invokes the PL1 um, compiler of all things and changed it to an, uh, invoke the IDMS precompiler. Um, and then I just had to identify where um, the preprocessor output would go and then where the uh, high level qualifier for preprocessor data, which turns out to be the sys list. So if we take a look over here in my MBS files and I'll just refresh this and we'll see that I have these files here. I can name them anything I want. I chose to name them that. So if I click on this COBOL, what I would see would be I can edit that much like Vince did. It just pulls it directly down for the mainframe. Well, since it's a COBOL program, which it figured out because the uh, low-level qualifier in the data set was COBOL, it again, it is able to show all the syntax coloring and all that, although we would not normally edit at this level because then you would not be editing what you uh, were saving in your data set. But, oops, and I did not mean to do that. Uh, live demos. <laughs> Let's just get this restored. Uh, okay, let me get this back to back to what I had. This is, uh, uh, okay, let me just get back to this is the trouble with a live demo. I clicked something incorrectly and I lost where I was. Okay. And let's see. Let's just get back to this. Okay, it took a minute to get this back. I apologize for the delay, and it is still giving me, oh, there we are. Okay, so now I'm back. Um, okay, we can also, um, because we're invoking the precompiler remotely, um, well, I don't know why it keeps doing this. Um, there we go. Okay, we're invoking the precompiler remotely. What we, um, what could happen is there could be an error in the uh, IDMS uh, DML statements. And so the DML output from DMLC is here, and we can see this is the output from IDMS DMLC, which shows the listing of the program as it expanded. And with any, there are no errors here, but if there were some errors, they would show up and in this listing, and we get down to the end here, and we can see that we had um, no messages for this program, which meant it compiled cleanly. So, um, so that's uh, pretty much what you can do with COBOL programs. You can do the same thing with PL1 and assembler programs um, just by configuring the property group and, and uh, configuring a sample Rexexec. We're actually, the Adamus team is actually building um, sample procedures, Rexexecs that you could um, customize for your environment to, to make this uh, easier to set up. So if I go back to the, um, uh, let's see, I just don't I want to stop sharing now for a second and go back to the uh, presentation here. And we'll just quickly get forward to a, a couple more of these. Um, to get past these, these were, this was my, uh, <laughs> in case the demo didn't work at all, I always like to have a backup of, um, and there we go. Okay, debugging IDMS programs. You can also debug programs. There's a debug perspective. Uh, that would be outside the scope of what we have time to talk about today, but you can use the built-in debug perspective that comes with developer for Z, or of course, we'd like you to use the CA intertest 
um, product, which is a, a very sophisticated and more advanced debugger. Uh, it is possible for IDMS to uh, debug uh, batch programs, um, whether they're local or CD, uh, in COBOL, PL1, or Assembler. Um, you can debug online. Uh, you can debug ads programs using 3270 window, which is still pretty much 3270 interface. Or you can um, you can debug CSES programs um, that um, are just by the time they're compiled, um, it, it, Visual uh, Developer Z does support online debugging to CICS, and uh, IDMS programs can can just work in that environment. So. The next thing I'd like to show you is a, and I'll go through this a little bit more quickly, but that is the database development perspective. And this is the explorer perspective, and it's a way that you can discover and query databases that uses JDBC um, to access SQL-defined databases, as well as network databases um, defined by an SQL schema. The Atomus 19.0 virtual foreign key feature makes this uh, considerably more robust. Um, I should point out that some features of um, the database perspective are, are, are optimized for, for DB2, as we might imagine. So let me just go back and share my screen again. And uh, okay, so if we go back to here, we'll take a look at the database development perspective. And it's, it's there we go, it should open up. And there we go. Okay, so what I've done here is I've already predefined a connection to a test system, a CV we call SysQA10. And if I just connect to this, it will prompt me with a the usual dialog for the database I'd like to connect to, uh, the URL. Now, uh, those of you who IDMS users that use the IDMS server product know that um, the, I, the URL basically has a protocol of IDMS, and we identify the LPAR where the CV is running and the TCP IP port, and then the dictionary name of the, uh, that contains your SQL database definitions. So I'll just connect here, and hopefully it will work, and lo and behold, it does. Well, now that I'm connected to IDMS, I'm connected to Cisco A10, I can take a look at catalogs. Well, catalogs gets translated into our dictionary, and within the dictionary, I can see the schemas and these are all the schemas that are defined, the SQL schemas that are defined in our, um, in our Apple Dic Dictionary. So we'll take a look at one here that we call NetVFK because it's, a, it's an SQL schema that identifies a network database um, that is using the 19 over virtual foreign key feature. So we can see within that, we can see that um, there are a number of tables for those of you who are familiar with the IDMS uh, uh, demo database. Uh, these are just the tables that you would see. This is the network database, by the way, not an SQL-defined database. And we can take a look at the columns. And so these are the columns, the record elements, if you will, defined for this uh, network database. And it also, if we click on constraints, we'll see that since this um, database has been defined with virtual foreign keys, we can see that um, it shows uh, the two sets that this record takes part in, the department employee and the office employee set. That is useful later on, we'll see, for um, uh, showing the database structure. And then you can, uh, you can then query, and let's hope this works. And there we go, so you can then query it. So this is actually, we've, we've generated a query from developer for Z for an IDMS network database that contains these records directly within this tool. Another thing that we can do is take a look at um, an overview diagram, and we'll just select all the tables in this schema, and this will take a second to, to run. And when we do this, uh, okay, it's not responding, but um, it should respond soon. And we see this uh, kind of looks a little bit like a Bachman diagram. Um, this does show the, um, basically this is the equivalent of a schema diagram for a network database that's exposed through um, virtual foreign keys. Okay, so last but not least, one last thing I would um, like to show you is, uh, before I turn it back, and I'll go back to the PowerPoint. 
So we looked at the develop database development perspective. I just have to scan through these backup slides. And there's one last uh, thing I'd like to point out. There is an, um, because uh, some of our customers, we've seen some, uh, some posts on communities about this and we've had some questions and we've talked about this. There's also an open source Eclipse plugin uh, that was developed by Luke Krohermans, who is the um, incoming uh, co-leader for the um, Belgium IDMS User Association, and there's a link to it. And what this is, is this actually, uh, you can, if you punch out network schema syntax, it will actually show, um, I hope I went too far, too fast, Oh, boy. There we go. Okay. It will actually show uh, the Bachman diagram that, that um, many of you are familiar with, along with the schema syntax. Um, this is a useful tool, but I do should point out that this is, you know, this is an open source tool um, provided by Luke. Um, but I've seen uh, on communities, there's a, um, people more than willing to help out um, if there are any questions about this. So I, I went through this a little bit quickly, but um, with that, um, I, I'll turn it back to um, to Marvin to wrap up. And if there are any questions, so now I'll get, make you the presenter again, Marvin. And Fantastic, thank you. Here we go. I think you've got it back. All righty, uh, folks. That concludes. Uh, the main portion of, uh, of our presentation today in terms of uh, sharing with you the database perspective for safe development environment for these systems. Uh, before I open it up to the floor for questions, I did just want to make a brief shout out to CA World uh, occurring this November from the 13th to the 17th. Just want to call out that call for speakers uh, has been extended to July 14th. Uh, this is an opportunity for yourself, whether, whether you're a customer of ours or a fellow CA employee uh, listening to our uh, webcast, all of you uh, have this opportunity to submit an idea to for a session SC world based on, you know, your interests, what you're, what you're seeing out there as the, the big questions and the big problems that uh, we need to address in, in the application economy. So uh, we absolutely uh, would love to hear your input. You know, I, as someone who, who runs this uh, every year, I can, I can honestly say that uh, customer-driven sessions are by far the most interesting and, and compelling. So please do um, take a moment uh, to share your inspiration there. Uh, you can find out more simply by visiting ca.com slash CA world. With that then, folks, I will um, open the floor to any questions. Again, uh, feel free to submit those in the uh, top right-hand corner. There's a little box that says Q&A. If you click on that and open up the window, you can submit a question and we'll um, see that on our screen. Open up for a few minutes for that. And in the meantime, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you through a, a heads up warning. If you have anything else that you wanted to share in lieu of a Q&A, Dave, Dehan, and Vince, um, feel free to get that prepped up. I'll hand the ball back to you. <laughs> ah, so. Um, let's see, I do see a question here, although my screen is actually not showing it correctly. Let me see if I can. My apologies, you can just give me one quick second. Okay, I do see a few questions coming in. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm actually experiencing some technical difficulties with my WebEx, so um, Chris, Dehan, Dave, or Vince, if you um, see those questions, you can just, you just do the same thing, click on the Q&A box. Uh, feel free to go ahead and field those. I will be back in the WebEx momentarily. Sure, so I see uh, Don asked a question, is the database development panel slash functions also available to the same degree for Datacom? Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, so uh, Don asked, 
is the database database development panel slash functions also available to the same degree for data comp? Yes, all features and functions that you saw as far as uh, from um, the IDMS world um, are also, uh, you know, equivalent there on the data comp environment. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Uh, yeah. I've seen questions yet but we'll leave it open for another couple of minutes in case anybody's still answering. Majid, you said you had a question? Yeah. Uh, I pre-submitted the, submitted the must job. Do you have the upper console command capability for there? Or? Well, uh, as you saw, basically everything that, that um, uh, as, as far as, you know, the output was concerned, I was able to see the entire thing. But if you could do a com EOJ or status command or whatever. I mean, that would be available there as well, correct. There is an, uh, and there is a console uh, function okay. there. Right, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry to ask you this. Uh, could you um, just go over that, repeat the question again for the broader okay. audience and, and the well, other then basically, um, you know, the question is, uh, are there uh, uh, the opportunity in order for you to be able to go ahead and write to the console since most of our use, the user community from our world also, you know, perform a lot of uh, the commands through the console directly com uh, communicating with the multi-user environment. And, that, and basically the answer is yes, there is a console operator, uh, a panel there that you are able to perform that function through. Fantastic, thank you. You're welcome. Well, any other questions? I have a question. Uh, if you, uh, while you're editing a, a data set or member, um, is that FTP to your, your local machine or do you, do you keep it open on the mainframe side? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll jump in on that one. I, um, I think the, quest, the question was if you're, when you're editing a data set member, it, it, um, it, it does download it to a, a temporary file to uh, your local PC, and you can actually find those um, in the file system. But it, as soon as you save it, it stores it back into uh, your mainframe data set, and it also puts a lock on your mainframe data set so that nobody else can edit it. So for all practical purposes, it's sort of doing it on the mainframe. Um, one thing that you need to be careful of is if you, uh, it is possible to leave the lock there, so you might have to, um, if you crash your developer for Z <laughs> environment for some reason, if you don't exit out, and then, but you can, you can correct that. But does that answer the question? I think so, so there's a, there's a SysDS and an NQ kept on the data set. Or is it something else you're calling a lock? Well, it, 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 it basically it means nobody else can. Uh, I use using that in a gen, sort of generic term that nobody else can access it. Yeah, but it's the actual mechanism is. I'm sure it's what you said. Okay. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so we'll go ahead and uh, begin to wrap this up. Folks, I uh, just want to thank you again for taking the time to join us today for our webcast. Uh, again, this is part three of our ongoing Tech Talk series for the development environment for Z systems. So if you haven't had the opportunity to catch part Parts one and two, I highly encourage that you do so uh, by visiting C communities. You can find those on-demand videos uh, right there, and um, you, you will probably be receiving a follow-up email with those links as well. We'll continue this on again in the next month. Um, tentatively, uh, part four is going to be on our Eclipse plugin, so a lot of exciting content right there. And around the same time, uh, you know, I'll just go ahead and throw this out there. Uh, in July, we'll, we'll also be running our annual virtual summit, uh, incredibly great event covering our entire um, mainframe BU and even more um, in terms of the latest and greatest on uh, 
what, what leaders are, are dealing with these days and, and the latest uh, news on our products and such. So be sure to catch that as well. I'll um, leave it at that. Thank you all again, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, Dave, Vince, and Dehan, thank you all for taking the time to host us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having us. All righty. Thanks.